Hi everyone and welcome to today's drama hospital recap. As always, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos or recaps. Nice day on drama hospital, although kind of unfortunate because like not not often do they reference like what the actual day is on general hospital but today they did and it was very clearly supposed to be yesterday's because of the ides of march so that's unfortunate but let's get to the recap right now so at crimson yeah ides of ides of march reference very unfortunate and maxi's superstitious about the ides of march and thinks that maybe they should have i don't know did the release today <laughs> uh but dylan in passing brings up Tracy's illness and Maxie asks how she is. Adila says he would love to smack Dr. Mays. <laughs> so uh, Maxie's worried because the printer asked if they wanted the issue printed green again. And she's worried because it, he made it seem like it was a choice more than like a mistake on his end. Uh, so the new issue has arrived and uh, magazines aren't stapled or bound in any way. So they're just all individual pages. Not, not good at all. That's the opposite of good, actually. That's actually very, very bad. So, the cover does look amazing with Olivia and Leo, though. At the hospital, Epiphany is looking forward to the magazine coming out. And, uh, Liz tells her that Franco came all the way to Philly to be with Jake. And, again, a day, I mean, it, yeah, it'd be a big trip in real life, but in general hospital life, it, like, wasn't. So, it kind of takes away from some of the stuff that went on today, just for me personally. But, anyway, so, Epiphany asks if there's anything going on between Franco and her, and Liz says that they're just talking about Jake. Everything's just about Jake. And Franco sees the Jake's adventure book on top of the lockers in the locker room, and he starts looking through it, and Nina grabs it out of his hand. And, apparently, she's been giving him the silent treatment and he hasn't noticed never a good sign so Franco says that you know she's been working non-stop and you know then you know he has all his stuff going on with Kiki and everything so they haven't gotten a chance to talk and he asks what he did and she says he went all the way to Philly to visit Liz and Jake and didn't tell her and Nina's upset because you know she really wants a child and he's always insisting he'd be a horrible father yet he'll go out of his way for Elizabeth and her son and apparently he also never answered when Nina tried to get in contact with him. So Franco feels like Jake's the or he, he's the only one Jake can talk to because of all the tension between Liz and Jason and he even goes on to say that he's glad uh, he has Liz as a friend and she's nothing more than a friend and Epiphany and Liz are looking on to the conversation. So Elizabeth and Epiphany leave the locker room and she tells Epiphany that she doesn't even want to be friends with Franco and Epiphany warns her about not, um, not getting in between the two of them. So Nina says that she to Franco that she never assumed that anything was going on between uh, Elizabeth and him but now. <laughs> so Franco says that he's being realistic and you know no adoption agency would give them a child and she says you know the person who told her she couldn't have children might have been lying because she lied about a bunch of other things and Franco gives her a solid maybe if they can have a child on their own so that's that's a good sign right so elizabeth tells franco that they're not friends and he kidnapped her son and she'll never forgive him for that and she tells him that there are other art therapists and he will no longer be working with jake so franco hands her the jake book and she's not happy and he asks her um if she wants to know what the book means uh so as sunny's place uh, Sunny tells Max that Carlos is alive, and Sunny orders orders Max to bring him, or have, you know, their people bring him back alive, uh, so he can turn Julian in. Uh, Christina comes in, they talk about the wedding and how he did what he had to do, and then Sunny offers that, uh, Christina can stay at his house, and Sunny wants to discuss Parker. So, Sunny asks about her independent study, and she gives, like, a vague description and asks about Morgan. So, he really wants her to open up about what's going on with her, and Christina says that there's nothing going on and is going to head out so she can be at the hearing, because Olivia's hearing starts today. So, well, I guess it's technically the mayor's hearing. I don't know. Anyway, so, uh, Sunny tells Max uh, about the check that was never cashed uh, for Christina's tuition, and that Christina said she would hand deliver it, and he wants Max to follow up at the school, because the school wouldn't tell him anything, because technically, well, because Christina's an adult, so they can't release any of, her, any of her information. Uh, at Julexis's house, uh, Julia makes Alexis a breakfast, and he put the case on the front page of the paper. Uh, Molly comes over with flowers and she wants to talk about the case and thinks it's cool that uh, Alexis is representing Olivia. Uh, Alexis is glad that the Crimson Issue is coming out today, the day the case is getting underway. Ha ha ha. 
Yeah. No, your your husband uh, sabotaged that. See, this is why I think he should have let this one pass. Just saying. But anyway, um, so Alexis asks Molly what's going on with Christina. And Molly says Christina will have to tell her. And Christina comes in and Molly gives her a heads up that Alexis has been asking about her. So Christina's still figuring things out herself. She doesn't know if she's gay or not. Like, So she doesn't want to like... Like, she, she doesn't want to tell people anything until she knows what's going on. So, Molly's like, well, you should at least tell them that you got kicked out of school. And she's like, no, but then I would have to, like, explain why. It all has to go together. So, I, I see Christina's point. Um, but, you know, they, they know something's going on. So, I don't know how much longer she can hide it. Uh, back at Crimson, Dylan and Maxie show Nina that the magazines arrived not bound. So Maxie tells them that the printer says that she ordered them like this, or maybe she's, he's just saying like Crimson ordered them like this, but, um, Maxie's saying like, I didn't, I didn't order them like this. And Nina's like, I know it's not your fault. It's obviously the printer trying to cover up for what they're doing, but they would have to pay to get a whole new issue, um, you know, print it up. So Jul uh, Nina says that Julian's going to have to fix this and Julian walks up behind her and is like, no. So Julian says he's so disappointed in this and he's like, you can salvage this. Look what you did with the green issue. <laughs> Shut up, Julian. <sighs> <laughs> so Maxi uh, pep talks Nina that she can sell this. She can spin this somehow. So uh, Jay Sam, this they're at Jason's new place that I kind of thought was a garage because he has a motorcycle in the middle of it, but it's not furnished or anything yet, and the walls aren't really painted. Uh, what did he get that place for? He knows he has money, right? <laughs> anyway, so Sam returns Jason's plaque, and uh, there's... Um, <laughs> she tells him that how she cut her hand and is blaming Helena and then she tells him about the one cent insult from the will and she offers to help him fix up the bike and she says she's always been better at fixing engines than him and she's like you know I don't even believe you remember how to fix bikes I could teach you but then they kind of move on to rekindling their romance when he gets a notification that uh, his furniture will be here but instead of it being like actual furniture it's just um two things that he had framed that he found at this like um store that sells used furniture and other like antique and just uh, stuff like that um so um it arrives and he's like Sam why don't you open them let's open them let's see what they are and you will learn about that in a second uh so now end scene uh Franco asks Liz if he can please help Jake and she does agree uh Maxie says she doesn't think this happened by some accident she thinks someone is sabotaging Crimson oh I wonder who that could be Alexis wants to know the, the truth from Christina and Christina says it isn't time because you know she's due in court and they'll have to talk about it later and then Sonny's at the door and asks uh Christina uh, you know he wants to talk to Christina and he says that she needs to tell him what's going on right now uh, Sam looks at the pictures that are in the frames and um, she says that the these pictures are a big deal because they were on the mantle the mantle of the penthouse for years dun 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 <laughs> <laughs> the plot thickens. Uh, that is it for today's General Hospital recap. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It means so, so much. And I will see you tomorrow for more General Hospital. Oh, will I? Actually, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not, I don't think I'll see you tomorrow for more General Hospital because, or it'll be a late upload. How about that? Tomorrow will be a late upload because, as some of you may or may not know, it's my birthday tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, it'll be a late upload, like probably really late. I don't know what's going on. There's apparently plans I don't know about. Uh, but I will see you late tomorrow for more General Hospital and I hope you have a great day and I hope you have a great St. Patrick's Day. Bye!